Hey everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery and in today's video I'd like to show you how I installed this DIY multi-zone mini split AC unit from Mr. Cool. Here in the living room I upgraded from the old window unit coming through the wall and I installed a second receiver in the bedroom which should be awesome. Now I do want to say Mr. Cool provided this unit free of charge so thank you to Mr. Cool but my goal is to keep this video super candid so without any further ado let's go ahead and get started on Modern Builds. Rather than installing your condenser straight onto the ground, you can use one of these polymer pads. They're basically indestructible and they work great, but I really like the look of a concrete slab and I've wanted to get some practice, so that was my first step in this project. I mixed up one bag of fast setting quickrete at a time and I made sure to use the shovel to work it into the corners of that form. Then I laid down a layer of half inch rebar reinforcement and filled up my concrete form the rest of the way. After that, I screeded the concrete flat using a straight 2x4 and the top edge of our mold as the reference edge. And I decided to stop working the concrete here. I was curious how it would look if I skipped the hand troweling process. So after a few days, I removed the mold and I could check everything out. All in all, I do wish that I troweled it. You can see there's a pretty rough texture, but it'll still function great. So I went ahead and unboxed our condenser and made sure it was a good fit. Awesome. And make sure to follow the links in the description to find out more about the condenser or other equipment I used from Mr. Cool. This 24K air handler is going in the living room and it's gonna provide heating and cooling to the majority of this house. As you can see, all of our wiring points already have push to connect fittings and it comes with a template for our bracket. The unit needs six inches of clearance from the ceiling. So as you can tell by our template, we gotta take this thing out now. I used this window unit last summer and I kept all of my electric bills, so I'm curious to see how much money I save using this Mr. Cool system. This unit was really wedged into the wall, but Josh and I were able to get it removed. Both Josh and Jeremy, who you've seen, are professional HVAC technicians and they were out giving me a hand, so big thanks. While your template is up, make sure and mark the location of the hole that we're gonna be drilling through the wall later on. And installing this bracket couldn't be more easy. Just be sure to hit some of the two x four studs behind your wall. This project was the first time I've ever drilled from the inside to the outside of an exterior wall, but it was surprisingly simple and we made sure that we didn't hit one of the two x four studs. The Milwaukee hole saws are great, but this stucco dulled it really quickly. So Jeremy used an angle grinder with a diamond blade and scored through the rest of the stucco so that we could break well, it out. <laughs> that was weird, dude. I know. Just, weird. <laughs> Overall, you want to make sure that you get a pretty clean cutout, and Jeremy is 1-800 super pro at this, but there is this plastic sleeve that Mr. Cool provides, which gives a really big flange. And for the time being, I used a half inch piece of plywood to cover up this hole in the side of the house. That way we could keep working. I'll be coming back and doing a stucco patch very soon, but I'll probably not do a YouTube video since I have no idea what I'm doing. Next, we need to prep our indoor unit first by straightening out our line set so that it goes through that hole we just drilled through the wall. Next, the instructions called for wrapping everything with this insulating tape, but I had a really hard time with it. So I used this heat resistant tape that Josh and Jeremy tend to use on the majority of their installs. Once everything was in place, I came back with that insulating tape and I probably should have just taped it at the top with the duct tape. Hindsight's 2020 though. Feeding everything through the wall was really easy. There is a super long electrical cord, which is nice, but everything clipped into place and that bracket was really, really sturdy. Yeah, just snapped on. There's a different template and bracket for the bedroom unit, but the steps are still the same. <laughs> Nailed it though. This other stud is a little bit past the edge of our bracket, so we're gonna shift everything over about four inches. This kit does come with drywall anchors, but I wanted to be sure that I hit two studs spot on. That way I never had an issue with this bracket coming off the wall. And unlike in the living room, the line set coming off of this fan coil are coming out the right end of the receiver rather than going through the wall behind it. This is no big deal though, because Mr. Cool provides these tabs on the side of the air handler, which are easy to remove so that you can feed this line set through the side instead of out the back. 
Just be sure to always bend these copper pipes slowly and to support them where they're bending at. That way they don't kink or bend too sharp. And the copper pipes just barely stuck out the wall far enough to put a clean 90 degree bend going down towards the condenser. After Jeremy showed me the ropes on the first, I gave the second one a try and it was really simple and surprisingly easy. Just like I said, always be sure to support the bottom side of whatever you're bending, that way it doesn't kink. While we were at it, I also cut the plastic wall port to size with a multi-tool and installed the backs of the line set covers, that way we knew that we were lining everything up flat and square to the earth. Now that both air handlers are installed, it's time to connect them to the condenser outside. So we removed the covers so that we could expose all of our connections, electrical and for our line set. This line set is what makes this whole DIY system possible. They come pre-charged with the refrigerant and just need to be uncoiled and connected to both the receiver and the condenser. This quick connect line set system was really easy to install with a couple of crescent wrenches. They even provide torque requirements and specifications in the directions if you're interested. After the first air handler was installed, we did the same steps for the second. Dealing with a few extra feet of line is really the big compromise that you make with a DIY system, but the amount of money you save is definitely worth it to me and I'm gonna show you a cool way of covering all of this up later on in the video. If you're using a 24K air handler with a four zone condenser, you'll need to use one of the line set adapter kits that's included with the four zone condenser for that connection. You basically just swap out those fittings so that we can connect our line set just like we did earlier to the air handlers. The 12K handler did not require any adapters, so after we got the line set in place, making sure there wouldn't be any tension on those connection points, we could tighten everything down the same way. And with that, our indoor units were connected to our condenser and it was time to start the electrical portion of this install. And before we move on, I'd like to give a big thanks to the sponsor of today's episode, Squarespace. If you need a website, an online store, or just a custom domain, Squarespace is your one-stop shop. And the best part is you need zero website building experience. Squarespace's library of built-in designer templates look incredible right out of the gate. If you can upload images and drag and drop text blocks, you are well on your way to a custom site. Not to mention, Squarespace sites look great on desktop, tablet, and mobile no matter where your customers find you. I've been hosting the Modern Builds website on Squarespace long before they were a sponsor and I couldn't be more proud to recommend them to you guys now. So if you're interested in checking out Squarespace, make sure and follow the links down in the description that's squarespace.com slash modern builds. There you can build out your entire Squarespace site without entering any of your credit card info. And then when it's time to make your site live, don't forget to use the code modern builds for 10% off your first website, online store, or domain purchase. Thanks to Squarespace for continuing to support Modern Builds content and you guys for watching. Let's keep moving. I was really grateful to have Jeremy on site because he is very experienced with electrical work and we were able to pull this 220 volt run easily from our breaker panel. We were able to combine two 30 amp 110 volt breakers to this 220 volt service switch which feeds our condenser. We were able to snake the wire through the conduit that Jeremy installed and this was a really cool process to see for the first time. Next, Jeremy connected both of our positive leads to their connection points in that service switch along with the ground. Then he put in some flexible conduit which will carry our load wire from that switch to the condenser. I know there's a lot of DIYers out there that aren't confident in electrical work, but just think, even if you hired out this portion of the install, you would still save a ton of money over a full HVAC installation. Not to mention the only difficult part of this electrical install is complete. Connecting the indoor units to the condenser could not be more straightforward or simple. Everything is labeled and color coded so that you know where to connect everything. Each of the indoor air handlers have four wires to connect, a red, white, and black one which are easily labeled and go into these screw down fasteners. The green ground mounts right onto the chassis of this system.
At this point in the project, we could have called it and tested everything out, but me and Josh made this custom copper drain so that we could catch all of the water condensation coming from the indoor units, and I'll eventually be able to use them in a garden bed planter along this wall. For now though, we just buried a PVC pipe along with some gravel to basically make a fringe drain. This is definitely a temporary solution, but we've gotta have that water go somewhere. Idea here being that the water will be able to drip through these rocks and evaporate because of the added surface area. But like I said, these will be eventually watering plants. And if you're curious, these are the stucco anchors we've used throughout this project and they've worked great. The drain hose has a quick slip connection, but I made sure to tape that as well. That way it could never come loose. Then we cut it to size and they went right into those pieces of copper pipe. And after that, Jeremy threw some water into our copper pipes and you can see just how nicely everything drained. Of course, this much water will never come out of this pipe at once, so we'll never have a problem with it filling up like this. Our final, final step was to install these threaded inserts for concrete, which I had no idea existed. They worked great and this condenser was set into this concrete slab really, really well. So now it was time to test everything out. First, I opened up all of the valves going to our indoor units and I sprayed them down to make sure that there were no air bubbles. We were diligent to make sure and check all of our connections closely and then we could switch on our power. I heard beeping. I heard beeping. All right, let's see if they turned on. So right away, Josh already had his thermometer out and the temperature was dropping within seconds. Oh, check it out, this one's on too. Okay, how are we looking? We're at 59, 58, 57. Oh my gosh, and it's been what, three minutes, five yep. minutes? Yep, 56, 55, it's perfect right there. As a man who knows what he's talking about, how you feeling? I feel great, this is cool. It's very impressive how quick this thing dropped from about 80 degrees in here down to 55 degrees for the supply air, that's fantastic. In the directions, it calls to run this unit for five minutes on its coldest setting and then five minutes on its hottest setting. And if everything works great there, you are golden. But since I had some HVAC pros, we pulled out some more testing equipment to check it out. Okay, so this is what we're looking for, 40 degree coil. Yeah, that's what you're looking for. You're all good, man. All good. All right. Let's go. Put it here. Boom. It was awesome getting the seal of approval from Josh and Jeremy knowing that they are experts in the space and I could move on to a couple of finishing touches the next day. First, I installed these sound deadening pads on all of my copper connections. After that, I used some cedar fence pickets to create a cover for all of that excess line set. I made sure to glue and screw all of these pieces together so that I could create a shroud around where those line sets spool. Installing this was pretty easy. I just used the jigsaw to carve around a couple of openings. And whenever I had this complete, I finished up the garden beds and this project was done. So I am, as always, very pleased with how this project came out. I took a little bit of extra time to make sure that the condenser and the area around it looked as nice as possible, and I think that that went a long way. If there's one downside to the whole DIY system, it's that extra line set, and I'm happy that I was able to take care of it. On the inside, both of the air handlers look great, both in the living room and the bedroom, and I'm really excited to have that flexibility. The Mr. Cool smart thermostats are very convenient to have and allow you to program your setup for whatever you want. Not to mention, you can control your entire system off of the Mr. Cool smart home app. How cool is that? Plus, I was able to repurpose some of the outdoor line set cover on this indoor air handler. Super pro. So thanks again, everybody, for watching, and thank you to Mr. Cool for supplying this unit. Last year, during the summer heat, I kept my electric bills, and I'm really excited to see what the difference is this year with this new efficient unit. I'll be able to keep the living room on during the day, but shut that off at night and only cool down the bedroom where I'm at. If you're new here, make sure and click that subscribe button, and if you're not new here, make sure and click that like button, too. That way, this video gets boosted a little bit. As always, you can follow me on Instagram at Modern Builds, and we will see you next time. Bye, everybody.